just about a minute early, but that's all fine. Oh, sweet. So it's just setting it up to go live. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I'm getting like French pop ups on my screen at the moment. La Réunion est difficile maintenant en direct sur Facebook. Merci beaucoup. Well, I'm glad you can actually understand all of that. <laughs> so we are actually live now. So there's a bit of a delay of about five to 15 seconds from when we cool. go live to when people start to see us. So just be aware that in terms of questions, that that's something that is going to happen. Um, so for everyone, it is my pleasure to introduce Kurt Well. Uh, Welcome. I know I should know oh, how, to, fine. how to pronounce I am, I'm not it, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I should know how to pronounce it. I've had you on my podcast and I stuffed it up now. Now you would have heard him speaking French before. So do you want to tell everyone where you are? Oh, just uh, visiting my girlfriend over in France at the moment. I um, was lucky enough to, to be able to get an exemption to travel. So um, here I am, but till November or so when I get back and spend two weeks in a hotel to, 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 to do the quarantine on the other side. <laughs> well, that is true love. It's probably one of the most romantic things to travel overseas during COVID for love. So. <laughs> but that's oh, not well, what we're talking she, about she today. That's right. I'll, I'll tell Natasha she owes me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she's very happy to have you there. So now why we have Kurt on today is that he is one of the co-founders of Perla, which is um, a fintech so it's a share trading platform um, and later I'll be sharing with you a code an affiliate code if you're interested in signing up for his services but let's just talk a little bit about Kurt first so he read the barefoot investor at the age of 14 at an age where most teenagers are probably not so interested in finance books but Kurt was and he got started on his financial independence journey early now that might sound like, you know, he's been able to utilize time in the market. However, he invested his life savings of $15,000 in three stocks based on a stockbroker's recommendation right before the global financial crisis. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Ta yeah. <laughs> so having learned from that, he resolved to learn all he could about investing and why retail investment advice gets it so wrong. Um, and in 2018, he co-founded Perla with two of his friends, Hayden and Nick, to make it easy for Australians to invest in shares the right way. Um, so welcome, Kurt. Thank you, Serena. It's great to be here. <laughs> so today, um, I'm going to let you talk um, a little bit about what the financial independence retire early movement is all about and what's happening in Australia. Yeah, that's, that sounds great. I mean, like the Aussie fire is, is uh, the name of the ebook that we just released. And um, it's, it's very apt because it's starting to come a blaze, I guess, in, in, uh, in Australia, we've got the fire stands for financial independence to retire early and, it's been around for a bit over a decade now, I think, as, as a community or as a movement. And um, the principle is uh, there are ways that you can create passive income um, to mean that you actually can uh, retire before typical um, times. So you can retire. Some people have retired at 30. Um, most are aiming for somewhere between 30 and, and 40. But I, I mean, it's also a lot of emphasis is placed on the retirement, but actually financial independence for, I would say over 50% of the fire community is what they, is the coin. Um, and it's just the idea of well, being able to and being confident in, um, hey, if something happens tomorrow, I've got all my bases covered. Um, the work that I do, I now can choose to do it for the love of it, not because I need to get the wage and I'm not tied to it anymore. Um, I can choose to do work that I'm more motivated by, that I feel deeply connected to, things like that, um, I think is a key driver, although 
the retire early bit is the thing that gets it in the news more often than not. <laughs> I'm so glad you raised that because for a long time, I used to say that I wasn't part of the FIRE community. So, you know, even when I was writing my book, and I think even in the book, I say I'm not part of the retire early community. Um, and why that was, was partly because of my age, uh, being in my 40s and having gone through divorce and having to rebuild, but also too, because I used to really like my job, you know, so it was something I was really attached to. I wanted to stay there. It was an honour and a privilege to serve. I'd spent a lot of years studying, I had four degrees, preparing to do that. It was what I've always wanted to do. But then my work turned toxic and it turned toxic quite quickly, which can sometimes happen. Um and the day it all went really, really bad, I came home, hubby came and picked me up from work. Um, it was awful. But I looked at my budget again. We'd looked at it several times and we went, you know, we don't need this. I, yeah. I don't need to be there. I can just walk away. And, you know, you always That's want to power. be in that situation, yeah, right? Exactly. I don't need this. <laughs> yeah. There's no, no one's got a hold on me. And, you know, and that, it was at that point I went, wow, like this fire stuff, like I am now fire. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Boom, done. <laughs> I got co-opted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, that, that's it. So that's a great case in point. Um, and I think for many people, they're striving to be in the same position that you, you are and you, you were and you still are, right? Um, now, you're doing what you love. Yeah, exactly. So doing what I love. And, um, you know, it's just weird how all that happened. So now let's talk about what's happening in Australia and particularly this book that you've got, because it's a really significant ebook. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we work together with um, 20 people or 20, 20 bloggers in the Australian fire community to put together uh, Aussie Fire is what it's called. The, the uh, complete, the ultimate guide to financial independence for Australians. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and uh, it's a it's a really good book that steps through like the five I guess key uh, stages of the fire journey from um, getting the foundations together which we call preparing the fireplace um, through to like uh, getting the starting to just think about like the savings and how that works um, through to the next stage which is all right, learning to invest, um, we call that sparking a fire, then we learn optimizing your, you know, how everything comes together, which is stoking the fire. And then we got all the way to the current and last release, which is on this week, which is um, Get Fire. Uh, and your article actually comes out tomorrow. So, uh, yay. We'll yeah, I'm, I'm a contributor. So I've written a chapter on financial resilience and that's going to be released tomorrow. I've read it, obviously, because I wrote it. So, um, <laughs> but I will be sharing that out on all of my socials tomorrow once it has come out and it's been released. It's one of the last chapters in the book, not the last, but one of the last. Um, and so I'm very proud to have had that opportunity to contribute. Thanks for contributing. I mean, we, we owe it to everyone. And, and I think the the, the book itself is, isn't, isn't really our book as much as it is a, as a community collaboration. Um, there's 20 authors, 25 chapters. Um, all of them are substantial chapters that have real value. Um, and yeah, the, what we've got now is a, a guide to fire for Aussies, which uh, is hopefully the go-to resource that now thousands of Aussies can use. So, uh, hundreds and have downloaded all those thousands have downloaded it now so i think in a couple of months thousands will have downloaded it and, and we'll be on our way because <laughs> the fire movement was really big in the u.s for a long time and i think my impression is that it, it was happening in australia but at a grassroots level is, is that your impression that you know it wasn't the same level of momentum as in the states at least not initially absolutely um absolutely and i don't know why it kicked off in the, in the States. Um, I guess a lot of big trends kick off in the States, <laughs> but after, after five years or so, maybe 10 years and then fire's only really been around for about 15 years now. So after about 10 years, it started to really get a hold here. And I think the lifestyle that Aussies lead and the values we have to, um, lend itself quite, quite nice to uh, the stereotypical fire mentality. Um, 
and you know valuing things above just trying to run in the rat race is something that I sp like speaks to a lot of Australians. Um, and so maybe that's it. And I think more and more, and, and actually Google Trends shows, um, it's in the first chapter actually of the ebook, it's a kind of trends analysis of what, how fires picked up, um, how it looks in Australia. Um, and Australia is yeah, within the top five countries in the world um, for fire over the past five years, which is you know, huge when you think about it. Um, it's a trend that is in everywhere from Singapore to Sweden. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. And, you know, I, I guess my personal observation is we're working such long hours, like Australians, like we tend to think of ourselves as being lazy in a weird way. I don't know why. Yeah. But we had some of the longest levels, longest hours of work in the OECD consistently. Oh, really? Yes, we do. We're not, we don't have the highest levels of overtime in the world. I think Taiwan and Japan often take um, the credit for those. Um, you know, yeah. the statistics often do change. So don't quote me because, you know, that what is in 2020 in COVID may be quite different. Um, but in terms of the OECD, you know, we consistently in Australia work longer hours than um, our counterparts in Europe and certainly even in the US and um, the UK. And then on top of that, people who are living in large urban centres such as Sydney and Melbourne um, and other others other places have very long commute times as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I think, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I don't want to be doing this all my life. Um, it has a real toll on people's health and well-being. You can't exercise regularly when you're working those sorts of hours. You don't see your family. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And striking that balance is is uh i guess something that more and more people are aspiring to um it seems it's uh yeah it's, i mean i'm saying this sitting here in, in, in france at the moment and <laughs> I, I, I know they enjoy a good hour hour and a half long lunch break most days so uh <laughs> I, i've worked a few months here, so. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I can see that in this case um, I'm surprised though. I thought the states would have been ahead of us. So cool. Yeah, so it's it's just um, a, a different scene. Now we do have a question from Irma Smith who wants to know how do we get hold of the book? Now I know we were probably going to talk about this later, so I might spoil your punchline and ask that question now. The book? Um, well, the book. It's as simple as going uh, to the Aussie Fire ebook, um, or you could go type in Pearl or an Aussie fire. Um, we have a URL though we could post somewhere, don't we, Serena? How would we do that? Um, yeah, so um, I just tried and I managed to get the sound onto Zoom. So when I do replies, it, it, it um, goes to, it's a, it's a long story, but I, I will post comments on the Facebook page later. Um, okay. We'll post, post some comments now uh, uh, after this event. But basically, if you follow Perler, P-E-A-R-L-E-R -E -E on um, Facebook or on Twitter, you'll see that Kurt has been releasing um, the chapters each set, each section as they come out so we're now nearly to the end so there's still a couple of chapters that haven't been released so my chapter gets released tomorrow and I think there's a final one from Michelle Frugality and Freedom is that right? Yep there is there's a final one and then there's like a wrap-up where uh, a number of authors have suggested tools um, and then we've got the conclusion so Saturday is going to be the conclusion um, the everything that's been released to date can be downloaded if yeah you just go straight to one of those blog posts that's been released on our uh, on our Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram um, and then yeah from there you should be able to download it there's there's links everywhere on our site <laughs> and then after all of those chapters have been shared the whole book will be made available is that right yeah correct um, and so far all of the chapters that have been released to date, um, in, including yours, um, to, is available for download. Um, we just haven't released the conclusion yet because we want to do a nice last hurrah um, and update everything and stuff like that before, before saying, yeah, it's done. 
It's done. <laughs> and um, Irma, just to let you know too, this is a free ebook. So Perla um, are the sponsors of this. Uh, so um, Bert will talk later about what Perla does, but you know they have sponsored this, um, so it is free uh, to read and enjoy. And definitely the um, top twenty um, bloggers that he has pulled together contributions for. And I'm not just saying this because I am a contributor, yeah. but seriously, there are some really, really top uh, bloggers, podcasters, um, and others in the Australian Fire Financial Independence Retire Early community. There is a really really good group of names um, and people there who are very passionate about what they do. Uh, we did. We got lucky in getting a number of the co-authors on board. And uh, I think you know, they've been along for the ride that, that, that we're on as a company for a while. And also they cared deeply about the, the movement. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think you know, a couple of people were willing to put their hands up and right, spend some serious time writing these articles. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's been great. I know, I think we've talked about this before, but I'm always surprised in a good way just how collaborative the movement is. Um, you know, like as a writer in the movement, in a way you'd think we're all kind of competitors, but just everyone is just so keen to help each other. And I think it's because everyone just really is passionate about, um, you know, helping people find a different way away from the hyperconsumption, uh, you know, um, buy now, pay later uh, sort of society towards a, a new way of living. <laughs> is that a new one? The easy and buy now, pay later, BNPL society. I, I don't I know. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it is a trend. Yeah, well, it is a trend, you know. So, um, uh, so it, I guess people in the community is is quite different. Uh, you know, have a different view of things. So, were there any key surprises in the contrib contributions to the fire ebook? Was there anything? That struck out to you? Um, a few surprises. Interesting. Uh, thankfully, uh, the, like, so how we went about the process might be interesting. So we, we, yes. we, we put together, um, so, so first of all, I, I haven't actually given a shout out to Michelle from Frugality and Freedom, and I really need to do that because she's the one who um, really dug deep and pulled together all of the contributions. Um, and assembled them all, put together really the, the was the driving force behind the releasing the ebook. Um, so frugalityandfreedom.com is, is her website. Um, and Michelle and I, we sat down and we worked through like a table of contents. Um, we then bounced that table of contents off a couple of people um, and, and then kind of got to a stage where we were happy. Then we sent that out for, through to all the con contributors. We had the five sections from the start we knew we wanted to do. Um, and then, yeah, we got feedback on that process and, and, and the way we went. Um, I think the things that I didn't think about um, when, and Michelle and I both didn't think about when we were putting it together were, um, were for fire for families and, and fire for late starters. Um, and that's because there is the demographic, right? It was never in our, in our minds. <laughs> so we're like, all right, sweet. These are things we, we really, but as soon as I was suggested, it's like, of course, we need to take that into account. Um, and we got two really good writers on both those topics. Um, a family on fire wrote the family section. And then uh, it wasn't late start of fire. I think it was um, sustainable yeah, living. Content. Um, Who wrote yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, so did you say sustainable living has really good content? Well, they both do, but I know Late Start of Fire particularly does. So, um, yeah, I'm sure there's, there's yeah, some, some great things in there. And I'm surprised too about how big the Late Start of Fire movement is as well. Yeah, I, th I, I, think, I, I think it's um, a lot of people just realising that all of – it's so universal and – as I mentioned before, the, the retire early bit is just the thing that gets in the news. Um, so when we first started talking about FI, it was financial independence. And for a lot of what we will do, it's, it's focused on FI. But to try to be more newsworthy for things like this, it's like an ebook. It makes more sense to add in the RE, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess those were the two big things um, that were like, oh shit, we all glad we didn't omit that. Um, <laughs> and 
This is why you got to bounce it off people, right? Yeah, exactly. And I really like in your introduction, you go to a, a fair bit of effort to talk about the different categories of fire. And so there was a few that I hadn't heard of. Like, you know, we tend to think of people in fire, like you said, like in your demographic, you know, and they literally tend to be young men in their 20s, you know, not quite 30 on the fire path or have reached fire. But actually there are different types of fire, aren't there? And yeah. Absolutely. Um there's, I guess, different types of fire in terms of the goal, the end goal. Then there's different like paths to fire, which we're actually releasing later, which is kind of like how you think about achieving financial independence. Um, and then, yeah, sure, there's the, the kind of clusters of communities. That's in itself quite interesting. And I guess that reflects the types. So there are seven types that we have identified so far. Um, I'll run from the top. You've just got your classic fire, which is, um, and, and by the way, for anyone listening, uh, if you just go to chapter one, um, Aussie Fire ebook, uh, it's called um, fire, Finding Your Why and Type of Fire is the, is the chapter title. Um, and they are yeah, the traditional fire, um, lean fire, which is really focusing more on reducing a lot of the expenses um, from and, and Bare, like really getting living down to um, bare essentials. Um, and that way you don't need to have a really high income to, to achieve fire quickly. Um, then there's fat fire, which is the opposite, um, where actually you want to have uh, $100,000 passive income, $200,000 passive income, whatever the number is. Um, yeah, I think I'm more so in the, the, the fat fire camp, I'll be honest. <laughs> at least I aspire to be at least. <laughs> yeah, which is... It's just great. And I mean, it, it, for a lot of people, and I guess these come from the motivations, right? On the lean fire, I, I tip, and I'm talking in stereotypes here because I have to, 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 to convey meaning, but in the lean fire, it's typically people don't enjoy working as much and they're much more focused on achieving that, that financial independence so that they can do something other than they're doing currently. Um, whereas on the fat fire side of things, it's more, I'm not too fussed about retiring anytime soon and I quite like what I do. So I'll just keep working away and accumulate a bigger nest egg. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, that was kind of how I was before, you know, I mean, as you know, I used to work for Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. It's weird. I've spoken about this a few times today. It's almost like yeah. I have a syndrome about it, but you know, I used to be a diplomat and that's pretty sexy. So, you know, at least it sounds pretty glamorous. It's not always in reality. So it's kind of a big deal to walk away from something like that, you know? Um, sure. Yeah. But you know, it's, um, you know, so you I always... had the passport and everything, right? Well, yeah, long story on my posting was to Taiwan, which we don't have diplomatic relations with. So I didn't have a diplomatic passport oh, really? there because we don't have diplomatic relations with them. Had I been posted to France, of course, had, and for official travel overseas, you used an official passport, um, which is a, a different story. But no, diplomatic passports are only for diplomatic appointments. But I had yeah. plenty of colleagues who did. Anyway, I digress. It was a, a different, <laughs> we're talking about fat fire. <laughs> fat fire. All right. I'm, fat I'm fire. The other side. People who've got careers that they really love, but they just don't want to be, they want to have, be able to pull the pin in any time and enjoy good, good retirement. Yeah. And then this kind of overlaps a bit with a couple of other types. And um, one of them is, uh, I guess, looking at the kind of, I want to progress to a part-time work arrangement and, there's two classic part-time work arrangements. One where you use your professional skills, which we call semi-fire um, or semi-fire. And then another one where you just want to have like a low mental effort jobs to um, occupy time or, or get to the fire day earlier. Um, and this is commonly called bar barista fire, um, where <laughs> you can tell where that name comes from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but actually it wasn't what I expected. I thought Barista Fire was actually people who chose to perhaps work in the cafe industry or enjoy lots of coffee. It was actually a different, the meaning was actually different to how I thought. Yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very much like um, low, like not professionally related um, employment um, and, and things that are typically lighter on, on, mental, on the mental side of things, um, whether that be making coffees, gardening, you know, things that, um, that you wouldn't have done professionally before. Um, yeah, so and, quitting, 
So quitting your professional job, but you miss people. So you go back and drive an Uber because you like doing it. Great example. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. We've got four down, three to go. Um, two, two on the travel side of things. Uh, uh, Nomad Fire and, um, and uh, da, 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 Geofire. Um, Geofire. So no, Geographic outbreak, yeah. Arbitrage, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, you'll probably be piecing together now that you can combine a lot of these different strategies to customize to whatever you want. Um, as, but yeah, so the Geofire is, it's a lot cheaper to live on the south coast of New South Wales than in Sydney. Um, so maybe you decide to relocate once you hit a certain number um, and move there or, or you could even, it doesn't have, or you could go country or you could even go to another country, like nation. Uh, and then no bad fire is a bit more of a, a more intense twist on that where you actually don't have a settled place. And it, it's much more that late 20s, uh, like, or not even late, but 20s, 30s vibe. Um, and before people start to consider families and things like that, there are quite a number of people who uh, would call themselves digital nomads who also associate um, with a lot of the values in the fire community. So that's kind of, I guess, where they are. Travel like. bloggers and so forth. Exactly. Um, and if you type in digital nomads, it's like this beautiful uh, online community, just like fire is its own beautiful online community <laughs> with like all the different stuff. Yeah, and actually, dare I say it, my lovely husband, he aspires to go caravanning around Australia. So he's due to retire in two years, nine months, not that he's counting. <laughs> um, sorry, his, can you hear me, honey? Can you hear me? Because I'm talking about you. Um, <laughs> and he's on, on the last kind of week or so, he's been um, looking, getting with the tape measure out. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's been looking at plans for like vans and caravans and thinking about how he's going to configure it for this. Like, we're not going to be doing this for like nearly three years, right? But, you know, like one when we do, I know everything will be sorted out. Well, anyway, it's all about I, having a goal, right? And, and, and the why. <laughs> and, and actually, we haven't covered that. We should have. It's like the biggest thing in fire and getting it right is firstly thinking about what's your why. You yeah, know? what's your why? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's Neil's why, right? He wants to go caravanning and <laughs> around, but going <laughs> along. Yeah, so, um, you know, podcasting around Australia coming near you, but not not just yet. But, um, yeah, so, uh, but you're right. And the why the why is quite different. And but this brings me to another question. So we talked about the why. Now let's talk about the how. How are people sure. getting to how, how to fire? And I know this is um, an area that, you know, you're perhaps more focused on because of, you know, um, what Perla does as a, a share market um, trading platform. So yeah. how are people getting to fire? Sure. So um, there's like, it's, it starts with investing. Um, well, it doesn't actually start with investing. It, it, it starts with getting all your finances sorted. And then once that's sorted, starting to save. And then after you've saved, actually doing something with that money that's not just sitting in a bank account. And that's where investing comes in. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, where do you think, given the listeners and the audience, it makes sense to spend the most time, Serena? Well, um, perhaps people can comment. Um, but I think let's start talking about, you know, um, share investing, particularly ETS, because that's really what your background is um, in yeah. terms of what you're doing with your business model. And, you know, ETFs are often associated with the fire movement. And um, it's still one of those things when I raise them, some people are like, oh, yeah, of course, like I'm all over it. I, you know, invest directly in ETFs. And then other people are like, ET what? <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah. Sure, we don't mean EFTs and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ETs, yeah. <laughs> so it's all, all strange. So maybe talk us through that and why a lot of people in the FIRE community have really gravitated towards these as a vehicle. For sure. So uh, if I'm going to pick a number, I'd say 80% of people in the FIRE community use um, uh, investing as their main means to achieve financial independence. Um, sorry, investing in the share market is, is to achieve their main um, financial independence. And the vast majority of those focus on using exchange traded funds or ETFs um, as the way that they will invest to achieve financial independence. Um, so what are exchange traded funds? Um, they're essentially a basket that you can buy um, just like a normal share on the, on the share market. 
and when you buy that that basket um, your money gets split across the companies in the basket in the same way um, in, in the same way well, depends on the type but typically in the same way that um, they are proportioned within that basket so for example if you were to buy an Australian um, ETF and you can buy a world ETF you can buy a US ETF you buy to buy an Australian ETF um, say Commonwealth banks worth 5% of the Australian share market, then you put $100 in, $5 of that would go to Commonwealth Bank um, and five, $4 might go to NAB and we'll pull up through to Westpac and so on and so forth. Um, of course, you don't just invest in banks, you invest in every stock. So there'd be is, BHP and... There'd be BHP, there'd be Cochlear, there'd be Afterpay, there'd be all of this stuff that you kind of think about gets in that typical basket but then there are also other baskets too so you could get um the you could get what's known as this etf called the x20 etf so it actually doesn't get the 20 biggest companies in australia it gets everything below that oh that's um, interesting or you could get the nasdaq etf which is a focuses on us technology companies um and or you could get uh i guess a, an, an an asian um a focused ETF, which will put your money through um, Japan, Korea, Singapore, uh, China, you know, thing, things like that. And the reason these ETFs are so good is because they offer great diversification um, at an extremely low cost uh, and allow, uh, and with, with an extremely low um, barrier to entry. You know, you need to save up how many tens of thousands of dollars to get started in property. Um, you only need to save up, uh, uh, well, $500 is, is, the, is the limit for an ASX ETF um, to get started. Uh, and you can even do less than that if you were to, to buy different things, but 500 bucks and, and then you kind of, you're in. Um, given brokerage costs, it probably doesn't really make sense to get started until you're sitting at about a thousand or $2,000 mark. But um, this is all, I guess, getting into the detail. But, but you can, you know, then save up parcels. So you could aim to say have a thousand dollars worth in savings, and then you invest in ETFs. And that's from what you're saying, it's a lot easier to get some diversification from that than you know waiting to say buy buy a thousand dollars in BHP, a thousand dollars in Commonwealth Bank. This is assuming that's what you don't want to buy. Thousand dollars in Cochlear, a thousand dollars in. Uh, Absolutely after pay like you are with your 1000 you're already diversified so if the whole banking sector goes through another royal commission um <laughs> or, or something like that you know you're not going to see all of your all of your portfolio slide because it's... exactly um and and so what etfs in effect allow people to do is incrementally invest like so every time they get you get paid you can take a proportion of that paycheck and instead of like sending it to a savings account, you just invest it straight away. And that way you're just like consistently investing. And, and it's essentially like a savings account on steroids um, because it's just got the, the momentum of the share market behind it, as opposed to the 0.5% you currently earn on a, on, a, on a savings account with a, with a bank. I don't know. It's probably, it's more like one and a half percent, but, Probably not necessarily i was looking um, <laughs> for my in-laws because um don't ask but they, they sort of have still been using an offset account as a bank account so i was like well let's see if i can find a pensioner account for them at a, one of the major banks and the interest rate was 0.25 percent that's how much they would have learnt, earned yeah. on their uh, money i so, mean that's pretty tough but but also like I mean, for anyone that's watching this, if you're if you're at that life stage, then it's a there's a different set of circumstances. Um, like you know, you can't just put all your money in VDHG like an ETF if you're a pensioner. You know, it's it's a bit more complicated. Well, you can and you you can't. You know, you've got that free will, but yeah, it's you've got a different risk profile. Um, that's my point. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. 
this is a very different risk profile and I wouldn't in, advise them to do that anyway because they'd flip out and of the market tip that would totally flip out so it's not yeah. worth it for their stress but um, we were talking about bank accounts and you know it's really you don't you're not getting much bang for your bucks uh keeping money in the in the bank right now exactly exactly um and so yeah that's why the I guess the fire movement and uh, look at ETFs is is um a, a much more effective savings account, if you will. Um, and because their investment horizon is so long, like, you know, our investment horizon is 20 years, um, typically um, using it to, and, and by investment horizon, I mean, you know, what's the point at which you expect you will need to sell? Um, and for many people, it's, it's I, like, they don't. Like, I don't expect that the money that I've currently got set aside for financial independence, I will ever need to sell. Um, and if I do, I don't think I'll be in the position where I can't wait for three, up to three years um, to be able to pull out money. Um, and because, and I also have been through crashes before, um, you know, more, most recently COVID and <laughs> before that, the GFC where um, portfolio, my portfolio had taken a hit. And because I have, I guess, all those things, and I know that I'm personally can invest longer term, and I guess, those are the things people should take into account, but also it's super easy to just get started with an amount that you feel comfortable with. Um, and that's, that's where I think for everyone, it's just, okay, you're saving a thousand bucks a month. Cool. Put 500 bucks aside to continue to go to the savings account and 500 to continue to start investing and testing that out, if you will. Yeah. And it takes a lot of courage to do the first one, to be honest. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think, my husband Neil had ever really been investing in shares before I met him. In fact, I know he hadn't, and I convinced him to start investing in January 2017. Sorry, I've got kids. Um, as you can tell, <laughs> they're not interested in saying hi. We're not cool enough. Um, but no, and you know, it did take a lot of courage. And then, you know, not long after invested, the whole market dipped. Like it really just kind of went. Um, it actually went back up in value close enough to what we'd purchased during a couple of months ago during COVID oddly which is weird but you know it does take a lot of courage and, and those things can take an effect on a relationship as well but then like you yeah. say you know the converse is you just leave it in the bank and it's not even earning as much as inflation like you know life does consist of taking educated risks absolutely absolutely um and, and yeah, the, like, I mean, just getting started is the most important point, mm -hmm. like as you, as you pointed out, you know, and there's, there's a lot of, if this, then that sort of stuff. And I, but I would say like on our end, we facilitate investing in all, like, in all uh, like shares. Um, and we try to push everyone to be long-term in how they do it, whether it be in an ETF or whether that be BHP or whether that be a small little, stock that they've got a long-term belief in um and that's like i guess where we draw the line it's like we only want long-term investors on the platform and because if people are showing a long-term investing behavior that's good enough um and then it's all about improving from there and, and the five community is really like pushing hard on all right i want to spend the least time possible to get a, a decent like a return that I'm con content with um, and a system that I can follow that's not going to be mentally draining for me um, and you know, where we come in is we're the first ASX brokerage that allows hello <laughs> you want to say good night <laughs> good to see you again um, and uh, we allow automatic investing in um, ASX assets. So you can just direct debit, sync it up with your bank account and all right, cool. You've got these three ETFs that you want to invest in. Um, cool. You can sync it up with Perler and we'll invest in one, ET one of those ETFs each month on rotation. Um, and that's our key unique benefit. Of course, we're pulling in a lot of other goal oriented features where you can set a goal, work, like monitor your progress towards it. But, the, but the, I guess the functional difference is we actually allow people to automate that achieving of the goal. Um, 
Yeah, and I must say, I don't use the automating function yet just because I'm in a different phase of my life because I'm in a, in a sole trader now and so my income is sporadic rather than um, sort of uh, consistent like it was previously. Yeah, um, exactly. This is the flip side of having um, quit my job. Yeah. <laughs> Payday is, is a bit different. Um, but um, what I really do like is the easy way that you can look at the interface about, you know, where you're headed and, you know, what, what your FI date is. Like it's a bit different for me, but, you know, for a lot of people just starting out, that's pretty motivating, isn't it, that you can look at that and you can see how you're pro progressing towards that date. Yeah, exactly. And so we want to get closer and closer. Like you can log back in every month and see you're like a few days closer or you're X percent more, more along towards your goal. And this is how many days of financial independence you've accumulated. If you think of like financial independence as 365 days and you've saved 50 grand and that might mean that you, sorry, you've invested 50 grand. And so that might mean you've got <laughs> 10 days of financial independence or whatever the numbers are in individual circumstance. That's, that's exactly what we're trying to do and do that for financial independence goal, but coming soon also are the home deposit goals, kids education goals, um, you know, that, that sort of stuff. Um, that we're hoping we'll broaden it out and make, make um, Perla more accessible for, for everyone um, who wants to invest for the long term. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, as I think many of you know, there's a, I've done a really good podcast, by the way, with Kurt that you can also um, check out where he talks about ETFs in more details. Um, but I'm an early beta tester and investor in Perla. So um, I do believe in that product myself. Uh, it's very easy to use and it's actually the, the cost of the trade is quite low, which is, uh, Kurt, did you want to talk about how much it costs per, per trade? Yeah, for sure. It's $9.50 uh, for all investments less than um, uh, $1,517,500, like that. <laughs> um, and it's 5.5 uh, basis points for trades that are greater than that um, if, by way of comparison. And if you do go on our pricing page, you can see this, but by way of comparison, that, um, for com like for the big banks, it's typically 15 or $20 for, for uh, same size trades. Um, sorry, investments. I hate using the word trades. Uh, <laughs> it's a reflex. Um, and yeah, or more. So we're, we're, we're typically at least half the cost of any big full bank, um, no matter the, the uh, transaction size. Um, and we're lowest in the market for most transaction sizes or, or equal lowest. Um, yeah. So you're very competitive on a price point and it's, you know, func the functionality, I know you're still beta testing, so it's not 100% perfect yet, but it's very easy to use. Um, and the other thing I like about it is just how easy it is to invest in ETFs through there. Like most other share trading platforms are, are more focused on the individual shares. You've got to hunt around a little bit more for ETFs or LICs, listed investment companies. But with yours, because it's really been um, developed for the FIRE community, it's ETFs are so easy to find. Well, yeah, we're just trying to bring them front and center because it, it should really be everyone. If, if you're not a professional investor, it should really be everyone's first consideration. Um, and to, to look at that because um, <laughs> you need to have a damn good reason to, to go, all right, cool. This is the reason that I, I have a better valuation on the price of Commonwealth Bank or on the price of Apple than the, than, the, than the team who works at Goldman Sachs who are employed to accurately value Apple. You know what I mean? Like it's just ETFs take all of that need, like need out of it. And so that's why like I've personally invested in I pick stocks for five, six, seven years or something. I know I did the numbers and it's like I did exactly the same as the market and I spent like hours like hours, you know, I would have probably averaging 15 hours a week um, on share investing. And it's just, where's the value, you know? And it would have been hard. Nostalgic. I'm sure you thought that you <laughs> knew you had all this knowledge. And I tend to think that too when I pick Scotox because you think, you know, you have this, you know, you're somehow special, you've done all this research, but it is a hard thing to pick. And I think the, the hardest thing actually is that people generally make money because the stock market generally goes up. Um, but the hardest thing is comparing 
your returns versus the market as a whole, like benchmarking. And you know, we've integrated with a provider called ShareSite on Perla um, for this reason, to make it really easy to benchmark your portfolio's performance against um, what's called indices or just benchmarks. Um, so yeah, for, for, for that reason, Serena. But I mean, this is the time where we should probably share your, um, your exclusive link so that people can skip our wait list if they're yeah, listening to the call. Exactly. I'll be sharing it a bit because what I've discovered is when I do um, a comment that uh, it, then the sound from my other screen comes into this Zoom screen and it gets a bit complicated. But yes, I do have um, an actual link. And so um, there's a refer a friend uh bonus uh so um it's an affiliate program so if you are interested in um trying out perla please check it now um the way this works is uh, and, and just refresh me is people can see sort of what i've invested in can't they they can see my, my picture i've got a picture up there they can see that i'm on it when you go on to um the website yeah correct so serena is a influencer on our platform um fin influencer uh we'll claim it um, and <laughs> as is uh, a couple of other, um, I guess, partners of ours uh, who have been with us for a long time now. So um, examples are Dave from Strong Money Australia, Michelle from Fidelity and Freedom, um, and Serena. And so, yeah, you can go on and see their, their, their profile, um, their portfolio, um, what what's their target portfolio is, what they expect to be investing in for the next 12 months. and you know, how they're achieving uh, financial independence. Uh, and the social elements of our, our, of our platform are, quite, are still quite new and we're, we're building them up. Um, but the beginnings are there and you can, you can see that stuff. So yeah, it's pretty, it's, we're pretty excited about it because that's how we think we can get people talking about money more. And as you know, the money taboo is just- Yeah, the you most... don't talk about money. You don't talk about what you invest in usually. And, and, and thanks to it, most people don't have really good financial literacy because we don't talk about it as much as because it feels awkward. Um, so we're trying to tackle that. Yeah, my Chinese speaking friends always talk about investing. You know, in my you know, in a previous lifestyle lifetime, I was often around uh, native Chinese speakers a lot more. Probably the same way you're around native French speakers. Probably more <laughs> people would realise. Um, and um, you know, you talk about investments a lot more. So um, I'll be sharing that code directly after that. And um, certainly, if you're interested in checking out Perla, you know, make sure to use that code. Um, if you're interested in being a beta tester of the platform um, I think a lot of the bugs early bugs have been um, fixed now um, it is still an early stage so you know get on the bad band wagon early um, it's um, a good way to build your wealth now we did have another question um, and I know I wanted to hear you talking more about ETS and particularly about Perla did what Perla's doing but um, Sato Tom has asked what are the other 20% investing in to gain their financial independence so what are the other sorts of things people are investing in? And I know there's a very obvious one. <laughs> G'day, Tom. Tom. Tom's a good mate of mine. It's, no, he's listening here now. <laughs> um, the, the other 20% uh, are investing in property, uh, which is the big, the big one. Yeah, that's so the big one. Fire through property. Um, then you can, of course, get to fire in a number of other ways, whether, whether it be like alternative sort of investments, um, startups um it could be uh p other funds venture capital uh there are, there are a number of different investment options that are that are out there that are more i guess fun side but for fire i would say there are the big ones for property yeah well i mean as you know property is kind of where i got my start um and i think largely it was you know timing you know i'm a different generation so timing was a bit different and um, i'm always conscious of speaking about this because there was a particular uh, there was a particular article last week that was talking about how your age group are just so disadvantaged um, and, you know, pitting the different generations, the boomer generation against your generation and um, saying that when your generation gets into power, you're going to change all the legislation to take all the money away from the boomers. I'm actually less comfortable <laughs> talking about um, this generational warfare because I think we're all sort of friends, families, communities, neighbours. It's a lot more interwoven than... Um, than just one generation against the next. But I was in a good position to start, you know, uh, first investing in, in property at a time 
in the Howard years where there was a lot of stimulus around and, you know, it was able to take advantage of that. So it did give me a head start. But that said, things like share investing and ETFs, when, I mean, the ETFs weren't really around then uh, and share investing was a lot harder. I mean, I had my first job um, other than working for my mum and her factory, but my first, you know, outside employment job just before I, I started 15, uh, working uh, at Franklin's, you know, a discount supermarket yeah. chain. And I remember it was just around the 80s. Was it 87 where they had the big um, stock market meltdown? The, was it the Black Friday or the Black Monday or yep. whatever it was? Yep. Yep. Which was huge. And I remember going to someone's place for dinner about a week or two afterwards and they said, oh, you should buy shares in a bank. I think it was Westpac from memory. I'm quoting from memory. And I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. And I had savings and I wanted to do it but you know as a 16 year old girl thought of ringing up a stockbroker that I found in the white pages to make a trade and something I didn't understand yeah it's a step too far so you know I think sure. this is you know an advantage that younger people have today they have a disadvantage in terms of getting a foot in the the, the property market yeah that is true uh, depending on where they buy. But, you know, a real advantage is that it is much easier than ever before to get into investing in the stock market and particularly ETFs. Yeah, um, ab absolutely. I think the, the accessibility of everything is becoming... Yeah. Um, no, of information. The accessibility of information and is is becoming better. And, I mean, our, our mission really is to provide the 99% with access to good quality financial advice um, and the tools to kind of implement it. Um, and so there are, there, are, there are quite a few, you know, in comp companies, it's, it's, I guess it's the momentum, it's the wave that people are working on at the moment where you've got a lot of good, interesting, accessible technology that's coming to the market. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, ex I think it's pretty exciting. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I think finding more accessible property is probably going to be difficult just because it's so unitized by nature and, and what people want to do with properties tends to be more of a, I want to make a home. I want to do a thing with it rather than just get a financial outcome, which is, which is really what the share market is about. Um, so Ah, I mean, these are all interesting musics. So I feel like I'm talking in circles. So yeah, no, <laughs> no, but I, I think they're just different times, different times. Um, you know, just uh, different things go in cycles and circles, and you know, um, there are different times. But you know, certainly, you know, in terms of investing in the share market, it's much more accessible than ever before. Now we have another question. I'm wondering whether this is another one of your friends. If so, welcome from Jimmy <laughs> Chen, who has asked, "What do you hope to see Perla become in the next few years?" We say our, our vision for per, our vision for Perla is like one place where you can compare the best like financial products for you at that point in time. And so to build that, like to give some tangibility to that, it's like we want to build a personal finance marketplace where not only can you like invest to achieve long-term goals, but you can also compare home loan options given your circumstances. You can compare superannuation funds and given your circumstances, get the the right ones for you or get given three really good options that might be better than the current one you have um, or just the confirmation that the current one you're using is the right is a good one for you you know that sort of stuff like we need to be always customer oriented tated and so like for a big thing that's on our mind is most of the comparison websites that are out there right now they get paid by the business for sending them traffic yeah um and so based they, that, that, yeah, and so they tend to only they tend to not have everyone first of all, and even though they present like they're doing a complete comparison, and then second of secondly, the the traffic that they send is clearly biased by the different amounts that people pay them for different different um, different referrals. So we know we need to work on that, but yeah, the, to answer Jimmy's question, we're really trying to work to this personal finance marketplace where you know. You have a profile, Serena. Um, you show people like what super fund you're with, kind of what home loan you're, you're using, even kind of what electricity company you might be using. And then people in your area can actually 
ask you questions around and, and, and vice versa about why the services you're using are the services you're using, why they're the best ones. And then also you're able to compare other options for you all in that one platform, make the transaction. Um, so that suddenly it's not like, so suddenly access isn't a problem because at the moment the right financial products aren't finding the right people because it's too hard for new people to innovate because you don't get access. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. It's transparency um, sounds like it's a huge thing. Well, I think um, it's almost time to wrap up. Um, if anyone's got any last minute questions, please put them in the um, chat. It takes a little while for because um, we're doing this via Zoom to Facebook Live. So there's a bit of a delay. That's why you can see two of us, which is great. Um, so it'll take a little bit of a while, but we will catch up with it eventually. Um, I will be immediately after this chat putting in the um, affiliate code um, for cool. Perla so that if you are interested in Perla please use that um, I do get some commission from this don't I uh, Kurt do you want to talk through the financials of how this works yeah for sure so Serena's part of the long-term um, supporter uh, or, or partner deal that we have um, there, there are only five people who are on this deal and it's not open for business anymore wow um, <laughs> I didn't realize I was in such an exclusive club <laughs> well, it's all those who've really been with us for the long journey. Um, and so, so sorry, what Serena gets paid is gets invested in us as a company um, as opposed to getting paid to her as a, as a partner. Whereas I guess for, for everyone else, they're getting paid directly, but we, we wanted to, I guess, show their appreciation and try to get um, everyone on board who'd, who'd already been on board for a long time in a formal way. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, do make sure to check out um, Perla directly. Um, and um, Kurt, make sure to come back and check out if there's um, some further questions or further things. If you're watching this on replay, please use a hashtag replay. And thank you very much for sitting by all the way from France. Um, <laughs> Anytime, Serena. <laughs> Um, and looking forward to having you back safely in Australia, perhaps um, not just yourself, perhaps with company in due course. Look forward to it. Thanks so much for your time. Mike. And um, yeah, thank you for everyone who's been watching. Thank you for being my guest. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>